Welcome to Heliodor, the first city in Dragon Quest XI. We're going to talk about city design and asset reuse today. I guess the first thing we're going to need to talk about is the layout of Heliodor. Heliodor is built specifically around a straight shot from this entryway to that castle. Because they know exactly where the player is going to be and where the player is going to be looking, they use a lot of tricks to make the castle look bigger and further away. They, uh, they fade it blue, which is called a distance fade, and that's very good. They put it at the top of stairs, which makes it appear larger. And they also use a more uncommon trick. They use the Disney perspective trick with these nested gateways, and that makes it appear really far away. So it looks like this castle is immense. It's wow, it's huge. It's dominating, dominating the whole horizon, and it's so far away. And in actuality, it's kind of a medium-sized castle that's right here. Now, it's a video game, you can make things as large or as small as you'd like, but the player has to be able to walk the distance, so that's what we've got here. A castle that's not as far away as it looks. You can do that same thing, just go ahead and Google Disney perspective trick if you're curious. Uh, that's something that they do quite frequently. Unfortunately, because the city is entirely engineered around this approach, the rest of the city gets literally shunted off to the side. Heliodore is a horseshoe shape around the castle. And any time you go off to the side, you're just running down a leg of the horseshoe. Now, they kind of disguise that by using a lot of streets that just kind of wind and do strange things, and it makes you feel like you're lost. And that sort of hides the fact that you're just walking down a horseshoe leg. One of the problems, though, is that they, uh, they didn't create a circuit. This city is a little unusual. Most cities in, uh, in video games are circuits, so that when you go down one particular place, you walk all the way around the city and you come out of the other side and you're done. But because Heliodor is a horseshoe, it's got two circuits, one to the left and one to the right, and you might explore this entire circuit, go all the way around, and then come back out and think, oh, I'm back at the entrance. I guess I'm done exploring. I'll just go to the castle now. Kind of strange that there wasn't a, a church. Wait, there's a, there's a church right there. How did I miss it? Well, you missed it because you explored that way and didn't see it. It happens. It's not a big deal, but it does mean that this castle is uh, interfering with the rest of the city's design, and maybe that's not good, or maybe it is good, who knows. It's really up to you to decide what you like and what you don't like when you're designing these levels. Heliodor is a little confusing, and maybe that's what they were aiming for. They wanted you to feel lost in a big city. Who knows? Now, before it gets dark, let's talk about colors. Cities are yellowish-brown, which is a dusty, awful color that makes you think everything is dead. In order to prevent you from getting that too much in mind, they put other colors into cities. Green, for example, but... Green is not a very effective color. Uh, not only can you have a dead city that's full of green, go ahead and play Nier Automata if you want to see that, but green doesn't impact your brain very much. You can actually go ahead and uh, look for Disney Invisible Green if you want to know more about that. So, instead of entirely relying on green, they've chosen to spike every single place you can possibly look in the entire city with wine red. So, no matter where we look, we're going to see wine red. Any sort of perspective that we can possibly have will have at least one wine red flag or hanging or something in it. And that is a, is a lively color. Wine red is a color of life, and it keeps you from feeling like the city is dead. And it's definitely on purpose. It's much too uh, carefully done to be on accident. Now that it's nighttime, we're going to have a hard time seeing those wine reds. For example, this is wine red, but you can't tell. Uh, but you can see how they have changed their, their uh, requirement. At night, the city is blue. It's super blue. Wow, is it blue. So in order to prevent you from feeling like it's too blue, they carefully keep these yellow lights shining. And so all around the city, we see just enough yellow lights to remind us that it's not just a blue city. And they're careful, in places like this, to have something to cast the yellow light onto so that we can see it, instead of it just being a, a, point, a pinprick in the sky. This sort of color grading, I don't know if you consider it to be, or color control, it's not really color grading, I don't know if you consider it to be critical or not, but 
you can feel like a city is dead, even if it's full of people, if the colors don't work out. So I do recommend that you at least give it a, try, uh, give it a shot. Now let's talk about asset reuse. This city actually doesn't use that many assets. It, it has quite a few, but when it comes to decoration, it's got fewer than you might think. It relies very heavily on reusing assets all the time. And when you're reusing assets, you have to ask yourself, how obvious is your asset? How much does it stick in the player's brain? For example, this cart. This cart has kind of a strange, skinny, vertical construction. It looks weird. If the player sees this cart too many times, they'll probably realize that they're seeing the same model. That's no good. So how do you get around that? Well, you make it so the player never sees two carts at once. It's that simple. If you've got something that sticks in the player's brain too much, well then just don't show it to them twice on the same screen. So we can see plenty of carts, but we can only ever see one at a time. Pretty easy, right? Well, what about the other angle? What about the exact opposite? Is there something that you can reuse a kabajillion times and the player will never notice? There must be something that's so mundane and colored so blandly and doesn't stand out at all and you can just use it as many times as you'd like. Right? Hmm. If only we could figure out what that was. It would be really nice to have an asset that you could use a million times and the player would never notice because it's so boring to look at. In between the two extremes of the wooden scaffold and the cart, there is a third option. There's stuff that the player will notice, but you can try and finesse it so that they don't think that it's a repeated mesh, but instead is just something that's a theme. For example, barrels. Barrels are all going to be shaped pretty much the same. So you can see barrels that are very similar, and that's fine. But you still need to prevent it from feeling like you're copying and pasting. So how do you do that? Well, the number one way to do that is to break up the grain. Here you can see there are eight barrels, and they're all tilted differently. Mm, that's pretty straightforward, right? This is an obvious example where they have clearly chosen to shape these, to tilt these barrels differently on purpose to hide the fact that they are just a repeated mesh. And they do that everywhere in the city. In fact, there's only one place where there are multiple barrels and they're all pointed the same way due to someone being off their game that day, and that is right here. This particular set of barrels is all pointed the same way. And once you see it, you can't stop seeing it. But everywhere else in the entire city, barrels are rotated so they're not lined up with each other. It might be hard to see in the nighttime, but these are all pointed different directions. Well, what about things that are a little bit more particular? Things that aren't quite as generic as barrels. Well, how about flower pots? Here we can see a bunch of flower pots. There's one blue flower flower pot and three of these yellow flower flower pots. So why are there three of the yellow ones and only one of the blue one? Well, in my opinion, it's because the yellow flower pot has a grain. This metal ring around the flower pot below the lip isn't on straight, it's tilted. And that means that when you rotate the flower pot, it feels just a little bit different. Like there's one flower pot where the ring is further away from the lip, and one where it's close to the lip, and one where it's tilted. And because of that, you can get away with showing them at the same time. They're just different enough that the player will naturally feel that there is some difference in how it looks. And I can't say for sure that that's why they chose to replicate these three flower pots and only have one of the one that doesn't have that feature, but it seems pretty compelling given that they do it repeatedly and they always have the flower pots carefully spun so that the metal ring looks different. I, I think that it's pretty clear these people put in a lot of thoughts about what the player would notice as a repeated mesh. You got something simple like a flower pot, you might think you can get away with just stacking up a hundred of these blue flower pots, but it's gonna look like it's a repeated element. If you just add a little bit of a decoration so that when you turn the flower pot it looks like a different flower pot, it really does make it much more robust at least in my opinion. Here's a pot though. This pot is substantially less um, blend-in-y. 
It's obviously a pot, and it's obviously a specific pot. If you were to rotate it, you would get the handles at a different angle, but it wouldn't really feel different enough because it's pretty particular. It's, it's, it's not something like a barrel where it just looks like a generic barrel. This is pretty obviously a specific pot. So, you never see more than one on the screen at the same time. It's just that simple. So if you are nervous about whether or not the player will feel like they've got the same thing over and over, you just make sure they never see more than one on the screen at once. Everywhere in the city that you see pots, they will always be in clusters of unique pots. And that's just universally the case. There is never a situation in the city where you see two of the same pot, because the pots are a little bit too obviously a pot. Uh, you know, they're a little bit too obviously a specific mesh. So, vary it up. Make sure that you don't have the same one on the screen twice, and you're fine. Now, these wooden uh, fences, you're getting real sick of them by now. You've seen them hundreds of times. They're all over. But what they're very careful about is if you're going to get real close to these, they make sure to have them off kilter and tipped and tilted and banged up. This is especially important when your camera is going to get real close. So, in this case, when they're at eye level. And you can see that any time we've got an eye-level um, fence, they've been very careful to break up the pattern of the fence by tilting things. Whereas if it's not going to be at eye-level, they've uh, played it a lot more um, uh, just generic. You know, they've just gone ahead and stacked them. Oh, dawn comes, so we'll be able to see colors again. Hooray. So just as an example, over here you can see another one of these fences at eye level, and you can see that it's very carefully tilted and tipped so that it doesn't feel repetitive. And that's the sort of thing that you're going to have to think about when you're building your city using repeated assets. With any given asset, how many instances before the player notices? How can you tilt it or decorate it or spin it so that it looks different? These are the questions you've got to ask, and it's, uh, it's a question that you should ask if you're designing assets as well. For example, these crates. How would you design a crate so that the player, so the uh, level designer could use a lot of crates without them feeling too repetitive? Well, one thing you can do is you can make the crates have different sides. Not like really different sides, not like one side is you know, purple and one side is yellow or whatever, but just different enough that when you rotate them, they don't feel repetitive. Yeah, they didn't do that, but I have seen games that did, and it's usually pretty, um, pretty effective. If you can get away with something where rotating it slightly will prevent it from looking the same, then you should, whether you're designing them or putting them in a level, it's best to try and make sure the player never sees that they're the exact same mesh. And that's my guide as to uh, level design and asset reuse here in Heliodor. We could go around the city all day and talk about the various parts that are reused over and over, like these chairs and these awnings and the lamps. And we could talk in great detail about whether or not these repetitive lamps count as repetitive or not, or whether or not the fact that they're glowing prevents them from feeling repetitive. It's, it's something where you're going to have to try and decide for yourself and maybe watch people play through the level, see what they notice, see what they get annoyed by. Look, more scaffolds. Anyway, next episode I'll probably be out of Heliodor proper. I might be in the castle. I don't really know what's going to happen when I try and go in the castle, because this is as far as I've gotten in the game. If the castle is cool, we'll talk about it in great detail, because a modular castle is quite different than a modular city. Thanks for your time. Have a good one.